Have you ever wondered why two completely different sports share the same name? Football. I mean, one is all about kicking a round ball into a goal, while the other involves an oval-shaped ball and some serious body tackling. It's like comparing apples to oranges, right? Today, we're diving deep into the intriguing world of these two sports, football and American football. We'll explore the histories, the rules, and maybe even settle the age-old debate of which one deserves the true title of football. Stay until the end to settle this debate once and for all. But before we kick things off, make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell. Trust me, you don't want to miss the amazing content we've got coming your way. All right, let's get this ball rolling. Origins of the term football. Our story begins in the late Middle Ages where the term football made its first appearance. Historians tell us that back then, it was a catch-all phrase for any sport played on foot, as opposed to those fancy sports played on horseback. As the centuries rolled on, different kicking games started popping up across the United Kingdom. Eventually, these games' rules got together, had a meeting of the minds, and voila! Football as we know it today was born in the mid-19th century. Around the same time football was taking its baby steps, rugby, or American football as it was called, was also making waves in and around England. Similar to soccer, players in rugby football aimed to advance a ball towards the opponent's goal. But here's the twist. They could pick up the ball and run with it. So we had these two siblings, soccer and rugby football, each with its own unique set of rules, like the Wild West of sports. Jumping across the pond, American universities caught the sports bug and began playing their own versions of football. Now they couldn't decide whether to follow the rules of rugby football or association football, soccer. So they did what any good experimentalists would do. They combined them. By the turn of the century, American football had evolved into its own beast, barely recognizable compared to its UK counterparts. But guess what? The term football had already found a cozy spot in the American lexicon, and it wasn't going anywhere. While the rest of the world stuck with football, in the US, Canada, and Australia, another game took center stage. You guessed it, American football. The irony here is that soccer, a term that had fallen out of favor in many places, stuck around in North America to describe the more feet-centric version of the game. And that, my friends, is the roller coaster ride of how the term football spread its wings across the globe, with a few twists, turns, and a dash of irony along the way. The American Twist The roots of American football can be traced back to two other sports, rugby and association football, or what our friends across the pond simply call soccer. Back in the late 19th century, these sports laid the groundwork for what would become the American gridiron game. It's the late 1800s, and colleges in the United States are starting to put their own spin on the game. Rules were still up in the air, and each school had its own version of the sport. It was a bit like the Wild West of football. But things began to change, and the game started to take shape. One of the key moments in this evolution was the introduction of the forward pass. Unlike its rugby and soccer predecessors, American football allowed players to throw the ball forward, opening up a whole new dimension to the game. The forward pass became a game changer, quite literally. It added an element of strategy, turning the game into a tactical chess match. No longer were teams confined to lateral passes and running plays, they could now strategically advance the ball through the air. In soccer, players use their feet, and in rugby, hands are involved but mainly for passing backward. American football took it a step further by embracing the use of hands for carrying the ball and, of course, those impressive catches. The evolution of the rules in American football created a dynamic and fast-paced sport that's become a national obsession. The Global Soccer Sensation Did you know that there are over 4 billion soccer fans worldwide? This beautiful game has captured the hearts of people from every corner of the globe. But what is it about soccer that makes it such a global sensation? First off, it's the simplicity of the game. All you need is a ball and a few friends and you're ready to kick off a match. Unlike some sports with complicated rules, soccer's straightforward nature makes it accessible to everyone, from kids playing in the streets 
to professional athletes on the grandest stadiums. It's not just about the game itself, it's about the communities it builds. Soccer has the incredible power to unite people across cultural and geographical boundaries. Fans from different backgrounds, speaking different languages, come together to cheer for their favorite teams. It's a celebration of diversity and camaraderie. Let's talk about the crown jewel of global soccer, the FIFA World Cup. Every four years, nations from around the world compete for glory on the grandest stage of them all. The World Cup isn't just a tournament, it's a spectacle that captures the attention of billions. It's a chance for underdog stories, last-minute goals, and unforgettable moments that will be etched in the memories of fans forever. In fact, did you know that over 3.5 billion people tuned in to watch the 2018 World Cup Final? That's nearly half of the world's population. It's more than just a sporting event. It's a global celebration where people from all walks of life come together to witness history in the making. I want to hear from you. What's your favorite soccer moment and which team do you cheer for? Drop your thoughts in the comments section below. If you are enjoying this journey into the world of football, don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more amazing content like this. Naming Quirks The term football isn't as straightforward as it sounds. In fact, it's a linguistic maze that varies around the globe. We've got soccer, American football, rugby football, Australian rules football, and the list goes on. Each one has its own set of rules, traditions, and yes, quirky names. The term football might be misleading if you're not aware of the historical context. Imagine talking to someone from Europe and they say, I love football. Are they talking about kicking a round ball with their feet or throwing an oval ball across the field? That's where the linguistic dance begins. The key is to pay attention to the context and maybe ask a follow-up question. It's all about understanding whether they're into the global sensation of soccer or the gridiron excitement of American football. If they mention teams like Barcelona, Manchester United, or Lionel Messi, you're in the soccer zone. But if they start talking about the Super Bowl, touchdowns, and the New England Patriots, you've crossed over to American football territory. It's like a linguistic game of football charades, but with words. So in a nutshell, the term football is a broad category that encompasses various sports around the world. Soccer and American football are just two players in this diverse lineup. What sport should be called as football? Should we really be calling soccer football? Or does that title rightfully belong to rugby? Here's a fun fact. The term soccer is a British invention that predates football's global popularity. Yet English fans often stick to football, leaving soccer to the Americans. But let's get to the heart of it. In soccer, the game revolves around those skilled feet a literal celebration of fancy footwork. On the flip side, rugby throws hands and feet into the mix. So why not stick to the literal sense and call the sport where feet take center stage football? After all, it's not just about the name, it's about the essence of the game. What's your take on this spirited debate? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. Key Differences in Gameplay Let's dive into the world of sports to explore the key differences in gameplay between two powerhouses, soccer and American football. In soccer, players use their feet to control and move the ball. It's all about precision, skill, and those breathtaking goals that leave us on the edge of our seats. On the flip side, American football is a bit of a hand-to-hand -hand combat, pun intended. Quarterbacks throw, receivers catch, and there's a whole lot of strategic hand action going on. So, feet or hands? The choice makes all the difference in these sports. In soccer, it's a battle to get that ball into the opposing team's net. One goal equals one point, and it doesn't get simpler than that. But when it comes to American football, oh boy, we've got touchdowns, field goals, and extra points. It's a symphony of scoring methods. A touchdown gets you six points, and then there's the option to kick for an extra point or go for a two-point conversion. And let's not forget the field goals, which are worth three points. So in the scoring department, soccer and American football are playing two different tunes. In soccer, you've got your forwards, midfielders, defenders, and a goalkeeper, each with a specific role in the game. It's like a well-choreographed dance where everyone plays a crucial part. 
American football, on the other hand, is a team of specialists. From quarterbacks and running backs to linebackers and cornerbacks, each player has a unique skill set tailored for their position. So while soccer celebrates the synergy of roles, American football thrives on specialized talents. And there you have it, folks. Which one do you prefer? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, here's another one you can watch right now. Until next time, keep kicking it.